In most modern FACO handpieces, the FACO power is generated because there exists within these handpieces a special crystal called the quartz crystal, which is a naturally occurring crystal in nature. Now the peculiar feature of this crystal is that when it is rapidly expanded and compressed, it can generate a voltage of current. These piezoelectric crystals are now available commercially and used in a FACO handpiece. In the FACO handpiece, a reverse piezoelectric effect is generated as the current is fed to these crystals. The crystals will vibrate at ultrasonic frequency. This frequency is transmitted to a hard titanium tip. So probably the reason why many of us refer to it as ultrasonic FACO and ultrasonic energy. But the reality is the energy generated is by two effects, a mechanical effect, this is the jackhammer effect of the movement of the tip, and the second is a cavitational effect, which is more important. The rapid to and fro motion of the titanium tip creates a vacuum in front of it that causes small cavitational bubbles to be generated. Now these bubbles will implode at the speed of light, releasing tremendous amount of heat, 10,000 degrees centigrade and very high pressures of about 1,000 atmospheres. And this is the reason why emulsification occurs. So what you see is the cavitational effect of a rapidly vibrating FACO tip. And the jackhammer effect actually breaks the nucleus down into smaller chunks and it is not the most significant effect of FACO emulsification. The cavitation bubbles, when they burst, can release tremendous amount of energy. Contrary to popular belief, it is not ultrasound energy that we use in FACO, but rather cavitational energy. Another false belief is that many people think that when the FACO power is increased, the vibrational frequency of the crystals will increase, but this does not happen. What really happens is there is an increase in the excursion of the tip, known as a stroke leg. At 100% FACO power, the tip moves to about 100 microns, and at 50% FACO power, it moves to about 50 microns, at least in the Stellaris machine. Stroke length is measured in milli inches. Now that we understood about how the power delivery happens, there are three significant modes of these power delivery. One is the continuous mode, the pulse mode, and the burst mode. And by default, they are almost always set to function in a linear fashion. Now the continuous mode is uh, the most, most basic mode where power is continuously delivered. It is used for trenching primarily and sometimes in very hard cataracts can be used to impale the FACO tip. This is how it sounds. To understand intermittent FACO delivery modes like the uh, pulse mode, the burst mode or the micro pulse mode, we need to understand the duty cycle. The duty cycle consists of an on time, uh, which is known as the duration for which the FACO power is on and an off time, which is known as an interval in which the FACO power is off. A combination of the on and off time forms one cycle. The percentage of on time to the entire cycle is known as the duty cycle. A 30% duty cycle means that for one second the total on time is 300 milliseconds and the total off time is 700 milliseconds. Now this can be delivered as a single pulse or multiple pulses. A standard pulse mode will always have a duty cycle of 50% and the number of pulses can vary from 1 to 20. In a micropulse mode, the duty cycle can actually vary from 10% to 90% and the number of pulses can vary from 1 to 120 pulses per second. A longer off time will help not only in reducing the net FACO power but will also help to increase the holding ability of the FACO tip. If the on time is 6 milliseconds and the off time is 12 milliseconds, how will you calculate duty cycle? So on time is 6 milliseconds, 
the cycle time is 6 plus 12 milliseconds or 18 milliseconds hence the duty cycle is 6 by 18 or 33 percent a lower duty cycle will therefore have lesser cutting power but much better holding power and is generally useful for soft cat tracks while a high duty cycle will have more efficient cutting and is used for hard cat tracks now apart from the duty cycle the number of pulse per second will also determine the holding power a high pulse per second will have a poorer hold than a low pulse per second setting hence we need to balance the duty cycle and the pulse per second settings when you set the duty cycle high you generally go for a lower pulse per second this is done in hard cataracts and when you set the duty cycle uh, low then you usually combine it with a high pulse per second which is much more efficient in softer cataracts This unique feature of being able to change different duty cycles for various levels of pulse per second settings is a unique feature of the micro pulse mode also called the cold FACO. And finally we come to the multiburst mode which many people use primarily in very hard cataracts. So what exactly is the multiburst mode? It consists of multiple bursts and each burst opens at the maximum preset power. As you press linearly, the bursts come closer together. Each burst has a duration which can vary from 4 to 600 milliseconds. This is usually fixed. And a burst interval that starts at 1.2 seconds in the Solaris machine progressively decreases so that it can either become continuous or just come close together and we can adjust this by adjusting a duty cycle. Setting the duty cycle at 100%, the burst mode becomes continuous towards the end and at 50% it becomes like pulse fake. In a hard cataract, I usually use burst mode with the duration set at 80 milliseconds and the duty cycle set at 90%. This helps me to impale the hard nucleus and to initiate the crack. Because the burst mode gives much better control with foot, foot pedal movement, uh, there is a trend among surgeons to use it even in softer cataracts like grade 2 to grade 3, having set a low burst duration and low power. The multiburst and the micropulse modes help to not only conserve FACO energy but also enhance the holding power of the FACO tip. Both come with the possibility of applying various modifications to them in the settings. What I've done is just show you the way and now it's up to you to try out the various settings and choose the path you want to walk.